Maddie, you were saying something. What did you say? I'm sorry? Oh, you did. I thought I saw your mouth move like you said the answer. What's another name for the promised land? The promised land. Ian, the holy lands. Well, that's what people call them today. Anyone have another? Remember another name? The land of Israel. It became the land of Israel. The land of the promised land. The promised land in Canaan. And this is the Jordan River. The land of Israel. The promised land is across Jordan, right? Remember the children of Israel were over there and they were on the other side of Jordan. Who was the main leader of the children of Israel before Joshua? Who was the leader before Joshua? He wrote the first five books of the Bible. Who was that? The main leader of Israel before Joshua, he wrote the first five books of the Bible. God used him to write the first five books of the Bible. Silas? It was Moses, right? It was Moses. And Moses told the children of Israel, when they go into the land of Canaan, into the promised land, that there were some certain things that they were supposed to do. And I have written the words at the top of this page. Can we see these words? See them? Can you read them? Okay. Moses told the children of Israel that they were supposed to do these things when they went into the land of Israel. Who took them into the land of Israel? Who did God use to take them into Israel? After Moses, there was... After Moses, there was... Joshua. That's right. And Joshua led the children of Israel into the land of Canaan, and they conquered all the big cities. Remember? They conquered all the big cities. 31 big cities with walls and gates. And they conquered all those cities. Does anybody remember from last week how many years it took them to conquer all of those cities? I said this last week. This would be a older kid. Like, oh, wow, it actually took that long. Does anybody remember? Cody, do you remember? Were you guys were here last week, weren't you? But you don't remember. Abby, do you remember how long it took him? I'm just stretching. I'm just stretching. Okay. It was seven years it took. Seven years. So, what are the things that Moses and Joshua told the children of Israel they were supposed to do when they went into the land of Canaan? What is this word? Can you read it back there? Did I write it big enough? Can you read that? C-O-N-Q-U-E-R. Not quiet. Clark? No? Conquer. Conquer, they were supposed to conquer the land of Israel. What does that mean? To fight the people that are there and to beat them, to win. Who helped them win? God. God helped them win. And then... When they were in the land of Israel, they were to worship. Right? Who were they supposed to worship? Aaron, who were they supposed to worship? God. Who else was there, or what else was there that they could have worshipped, but God said, don't worship those things? Idols. In fact, what were they supposed to do to all the idols? Destroy them. That's right. They were supposed to conquer all the people in the land and drive them out of the land. Are we listening? They were supposed to drive all the people that were in the land out. The land was now theirs. God told them to drive, conquer them and drive all the people out of the land. They were to worship God only, not worship idols. And they were to destroy all the idols that were in the land. Chop them up, beat them to pieces, burn them up, whatever, so there's not supposed to be any idols around them. In fact, 
they were not even supposed to say the names of those idol gods. Now, okay. when Joshua finished last week, he, they had conquered the 31 big cities, and he divided the land to all the tribes of Israel, and they were supposed to go into those lands and push out the rest of the people there, the rest of the Canaanites, the rest of the idol worshipers, they were supposed to drive them out of the land. They were supposed to tell them to move out, get away, move out, find a different place to live, and get all the idols out of the land. Now, the book of Judges is kind of a sad book. Because the Bible tells us in Judges that the people, when they went into the spot where God gave them, they did not drive the people out of the land. They were strong and more powerful th than them. And so they said, You will serve us. You will be our servants. That sounded pretty good, right? You have this land and you have people working for you. But was that what God told them to do? No. God told them to drive the people out of the land. So the people, the Canaanites that were there, they were their servants. If the servants were still, if the Canaanites were still there, who did the servants, who did the Canaanites worship? Did they worship God? No. What did they worship? Idols. So one, there was, the people of Israel were supposed to drive everybody out of the land. Did they drive everybody out of the land? Yeah. No. They were supposed to destroy all the idols that were in the land. Did they destroy all the idols in the land? Yeah. No, because they let people stay. They let idol worshippers stay. And they let those people keep their idols. Now God told them to do all these things. Because he wanted them to be different from everyone else in the world. This is important, especially older kids. Listen. He wanted the Israelites to be different from all the other countries in the world. What would he do for them if they obeyed him? What was he going to do for them if they obeyed him and lived like he wanted them to do? He was going to bless them. He would send rain to their, to their land. Their crops would grow, lots of food. Their animals would be strong, lots of animals. Their families would be large. They would always have food. They would have healthy families. God was going to bless them. He wanted every other country in the world, every other nation in the world, to be able to see how God blessed people who worshipped Him the way He told them to. And if Israel had done that, other countries could have seen, wow, we are not having, we don't have a good here, but they have a good here. What's different? They worship God. God wanted them to be different. And he was going to bless them if they were different. And you know what? Still today, God wants his people, the people that say they worship God, he wants them to be different. We don't have to be weird. But some people in the world might think we're weird if we're doing what God wants us to do. Right? Some things that the world tells us to do, the world says it's the right thing to do. If the world says it's the right thing to do, what can we kind of think maybe might be the end of that way? Death. Trouble. Right? The world says, oh, go have fun and drink beer. What's the end of that way? Being a drunk, losing your money, losing your house, getting in fights with your family, it's awful, it's bad. Getting in a car crash. Getting in a car crash. The world says, oh, have fun. Go out with this girl or go out with this guy and then go out with some other girl and go out with some other guy. Just live however you want. That seems like the right way to the world, but what does the Bible say about that way that seems the right way? The end of that is trouble. It's death. You have sickness, you have heartbreak. So God wants his people, all the way back in Israel, 
And even today, Autumn and Amberlynn, you know better. Pay attention here. You're not a new, new person. God wants his people back then and today to be different. And if they are different, he will bless them. But we said, so the children of Israel, they didn't drive the people out of the land. They disobeyed God, didn't they? They didn't destroy all the idols, did they? So they disobeyed God. And since the idols were still, were still around, and the people that worshipped the idols that were still around, guess what the children of the Israelites did? They started worshipping the idols. You know how they did that? You know how it happened mostly? This man's son thought, I like that Canaanite woman. I'm going to marry her. But what did God say? Should the Israelite believers in God marry unbelievers? No. Or this believer, this Israelite man's daughter, some Canaanite man comes, young man says, I want to marry your daughter. Should he say yes? No. But... He didn't care. He let it happen. And so, they begin to even worship the idols. They did not conquer the land. They disobeyed God. They did not destroy the idols. They disobeyed God. And they started worshiping the idols. They disobeyed God. What happens when you disobey God? What did God say he would do? He said, long, a few weeks ago, he said, he said before him, you can have this way, Good things, life, or you can have this way, bad things, bondage, slavery, death. It's your choice. And what did they chose? They chose, they chose the bad way. And what did God do? God let the children of Israel be conquered. They made people their servants, but pretty soon... A man by the name, name of Jabin, King Jabin. He got stronger and stronger and stronger. He had more soldiers and more soldiers and more soldiers. He had, there's a man in history tells us he had 300,000 soldiers. 300,000 soldiers. And he had chariots of iron. Not many people had chariots of iron back then. Most of the time soldiers just went on foot and they had like a, a spear or a sword. But they had chariots. Big wheels, iron chariots. And they came in and they conquered the children of Israel and they made them do what they wanted. So the children of Israel were no longer free, were they? Yep. Now they were servants. Now it was scary to walk around down the streets. People at home were sad. Maybe, some, maybe a conversation like this, they were, oh, I wish it wasn't so bad. I can't even go into town because those Canaanite men are there. If, I, if they catch you, they'll just treat you bad, even wickedly. And, uh, and um, maybe the others are like, any time I want to go to another town, I have to stink. Because there's robbers and thieves and we can't, there's no protection for us. I wish the soldiers would fight and protect us. And a soldier that's heard that said, we can't fight against King Jabin with his mighty army. Because we don't have anything to fight against him with. The people were upset, and they were sad, and they were, they were very, um, very sad and very upset. But after a while, they began to think, there's nobody that can help us. Is there any way we can get out of all this trouble? Is there any way that we can not have all this happen to us? Was there any way they could get out of all that trouble? No? Do you think if they prayed to God that he would forgive them? You sure? They went and they disobeyed God over and over and over again. So would God forgive them if they came and said, God, we have sinned. Please forgive us and deliver us. It's kind of a tricky question. Because I want you to think no. But... God will always forgive, won't he? God is not like us. 
If somebody did something to me enough times, I might say, no way, bud. You hurt me. You did wrong. You wronged me too many times. I'm not forgiving you anymore. But God is not like that, is he? They prayed to God. They turned to God. They repented of their sin. They stopped worshiping the idols. And they begged God to forgive them. And when they did, the Bible says that God forgave them. And he raised up, he brought to Israel a very godly woman. How about that? A godly woman. And this woman's name was Deborah. Is there anybody here called Deborah? No. My sister was named, is named Deborah. She lives a long way away. But Deborah. And Deborah began to tell the people of Israel what God was saying to them, what they should do, and they listened to her. They list, obeyed God, and they began, but they were still in bondage. They were still servants to King Jabin. And King Jabin had a mighty general. His name was Sisera. Sisera was the general of the 300,000 soldiers and all the chariots of iron. And one day, the people had been repenting. The people had been serving God. They stopped worshiping idols, but they were still King Jabin's servants. They were still not free. But Deborah said to a man, she said, Barak, get 10,000 men and go to Mount Tabor. Okay, so... This is Mount Tabor. And Deborah said to Barak, Get 10,000 men, go up on Mount Tabor, and God will bring Sis, General Sisera to the river Kishon, where you can fight against them and defeat them. Now, let's think. How many soldiers does King David have? How many? 3,000? Three, not 30,000, 300,000. And how many soldiers did Deborah tell Barak to get? 10,000. So 10,000 to 300,000. Those are all big numbers. But if we just divide by 1,000, that's 10 against 300. Right? Or like 1 against 30. If you were a big, strong man... Would you want, do you think you could fight and beat 30 big, strong enemies? No. <laughs> no. no. That doesn't make any sense at all. Only if you have but, a lot on your oh. Are you going to tell the story next week? Yeah. How did you know that? Who told Barak, who told Deborah to take those men up there? God did. God said, take 10,000 men up there. But Barak was scared. And so Barak, the man said, okay, I don't want to do this, but I, I, I will do this if you, Deborah, come with me. Now, this is kind of a funny part of the story to me, but the Bible tells it, so we were going to tell it to you too. So Deborah said, okay, I will come with you, but God, God is going to deliver Israel, but since you want me, a woman, to come with you to do your job, God is going to deliver Israel by the hand of a woman. So, Barak and he got his 10,000 soldiers, went up on the Mount, Mount Tabor, and what do you think happened? What God said would happen. I don't know what he was thinking, but, King, but General Sisera said, those rascal Israelites, they think they can do what they want. They're my servants. They're not going to be able... I'm not going to let them even go over there. King Jabin was saying, he said, General Sisera, take a ton of soldiers over there and beat them. And conquer them and make them do what I want them to do. So General Sisera got on his chariot and he had his other iron chariots with him and his thousands of soldiers with him. And he went down toward Mount Tabor. And he was there at the bottom of the mountain. And while they were all gathering down there, who was up on the mountain? Barak. And how many did he have? 
10,000. And who else was with him? Deborah. Deborah, the lady, the prophet, Deborah. And Deborah said, just like God said, he brought all those soldiers there. Now is the time to charge down there and conquer them. And you think Barak obeyed what God said? Yes. He did. They had their bows and their arrows and their swords and their spears, and they charged down there. And as soon as they began to obey God, God fought for them. You know how God has done that over and over again, hasn't he? A couple of weeks ago, he sent like hailstones, right? In this week's story, he sent a mighty rainstorm. And the river flooded over, and when water goes all over, can horses and chariots drive through water and mud? They all got scared. Duck. And the horses got scared by the lightning and the, they threw their riders off and they're trampling around. And what do you think they were trampling over? Mud. Soldiers, mud. men, Get mud. people. The enemy, God, fought for them and the enemy lost and they went running for their lives. And all the 10,000 men went chasing them and driving them out of the land. And a mighty victory was there. King Cicero was, or not, General Cicero was on his chariot, and pretty soon his chariot was going, so he said, I could run faster than in this chariot. So he jumped off of his chariot, and he ran, and he saw the tent of Heber. You don't remember, need to remember Heber. But he knew that Heber was a friend of his king, of King David. So he thought, well, if Heber is a friend of King David, I might be able to hide in Heber's house. Well, he didn't have a house. He had a great big tent. Big tent, a rich man's tent. That's just the way they lived back then. And so he went toward Heber's house and thought, if I can go there, I can rest, and then when it's dark, maybe I can sneak back to my home. So he goes to Heber's tent, and as he gets there, who does he meet but Heber's wife? And Heber's wife's name was Jael, J-A-E-L. J -A -E -L. And Heber's wife, Jael, she was not a friend of King Jabin. <laughs> she said, oh, Sisera, do you need a place to rest? And he was panting, and he comes in, and she says, here, have some milk, and just rest right here. And she put a blanket over him, and he and got his milk, and he rested, and he laid down, and as soon as he began to sleep, some of you know this story, she took a giant spike, tent, tent peg, big tent peg, and she took a hammer, and she put that spike on his temple. He was laying on the ground. She put that spike right through his head. That is gross. But he died. And God used a... Who was it? That was a lady, wasn't it? God used a lady to deliver Israel from his victory, from his from their enemies. Barak comes running up. He's looking for Sisera. And Jael comes out and she says, Hey, Barak, the person you're looking for is right in here. And he went in there and he was already dead. God delivered Israel. You think Barak remembered that? He didn't get to kill General Sisera. A lady did. A wife at home in her tent was, is the one that God used. Now, afterward, Deborah and Barak, they sang, and with all the children of Israel, they sang and they praised God and they thanked Him for all the good things that He had done for them, how He had delivered them, and they determined that they were going to worship God for the rest of their lives. And we should always thank God, right? He takes wonderful care of us. In America, where we live, we even have a holiday that reminds us to thank God. We just had it, didn't we? Thanksgiving. It's a time to remember how God took care of our country and how God takes care of us. And the children of Israel with Deborah and Barak, they sang a song, they even wrote a song to remember how God took care of them. And for 20 years after that, they worshiped God. But we're going to learn next week why the verse in Judges says, and every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Because not long after that, 
after those 20 years, they did, they went back to doing their own thing. And what do you think happened when they went back to doing their own thing? God let some other country come along and conquer them. This happens over and over again in Judges. I want you to remember this. The people of Israel are serving God. They're serving God. And they turn away from God. God lets a, an enemy country come and conquer them. And so they're worshiping God. They disobey God. Then they get conquered by God. And they live under bondage for many years. And then they finally turn back to God. They repent and turn back to God. And every time God hears the repentance, He sees that they believe on Him, and God sends a deliverer to give them victory against their enemies. And the Bible calls the names of those deliverers judges. It's different than the way we think about judge today. And that's why the book is called the book of Judges. Deborah judged Israel. And next week we're going to learn about another judge from the book of Judges. A verse says, There's a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And Judges tells us that every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And we know if that's what you're doing, what's right in your own eyes, the end of that is death. And so the Bible tells us these stories, tells us these things that happen, so that we don't go our own way. What way should we go? How can we know which way to go? Stephen? You forgot? How can we know which way to go? The Bible. We read the Bible, we know which way to go. Now I want to encourage you again and again. If you're old enough and you know how to read, you should be reading the Bible every day. Every day. Set your alarm. Don't stay up late on your iPad or on your phone. Go to sleep. Wake up in the morning. Read your Bible before the rest of the day comes along. We can say, oh, I believe in God. I go to Bible club. But if all the rest of the week we go to church on Sunday and all the rest of the week we never read our Bible, we're going our way, not God's way. We don't even know what God's way is if we're not reading what he said, right? So I want to challenge you to read the Bible and obey it. Follow it. All right.